This isn't just the absolute cheapest gaming PC that you can build today, but rather this is the cheapest gaming PC that I would actually recommend building. Let's have a look. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Hopefully that title and intro made this very clear to you. This is not one of those videos where I found the absolute number one cheapest possible new PC that you can build right now. We've all seen those videos from other YouTubers before, but rather this video focuses on that same concept, but by spending just a tad bit of extra money and making it not a useless cheap gaming PC, but one that I would actually recommend using as a minimal viable option if you're just getting into PC gaming. Today, I'll be showing you all of the parts inside this build and then we'll benchmark it. And I'm also going to be throwing in my graphics card recommendation to show what your upgrade path will look like in the future and benchmarking that as well. All of that though, after a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by MMORC.com, a key reseller website that I teamed up with because they're offering the cheapest Windows 10 keys that I've seen so far, as well as a ton of other software keys. MMORC is offering you guys a super exclusive sale on the Windows 10 keys. Click that first link in the description and select add to cart, click place order, paste in the exclusive AF coupon code ZAH35, and that'll give you a massive 35% discount dropping the price to under $10. After that, select your payment method and complete your order. Once you get the key, click start on your PC and type in activate, press enter, change product key, paste in the key, and there you go, activated Windows 10 for less than 10 bucks. Once again, feel free to head down to the links in the description and use that exclusive 35% off coupon code ZAH35. All right, so jumping straight into the parts list, all of these are linked down in the description, by the way, so you can easily replicate this build. This CPU is none other than the Ryzen 5 3400G, which has been popping in and out of stock during this crazy PC hardware market for around $140 to $150. This is easily the best CPU recommendation that includes integrated graphics as we don't need a dedicated graphics card with it. And then when you eventually do have the money to buy one, this is simply just a very capable CPU to pair with a pretty high-end GPU. The 3400G is rocking four cores and eight threads with a max boost clock of up to 4.2 gigahertz right out of the box. It's also rocking Vega 11 graphics, which is why it gets my recommendation. This is just the perfect CPU if you wanna jump into PC gaming on a super tight budget today, but then maybe later on in the future, you have some more money for something like a GTX 1660 Super for some serious performance. We'll talk about that GPU recommendation in just a bit, but for now, let's move down this parts list. And for the RAM here, I scooped up this XBG Z1 2x8 gigabyte kit clocked at 3,200 megahertz. A ton of us in the ZTT Discord server actually picked this up for a crazy deal of just $47. That price is pretty unheard of actually, but the reason we all found it was because none other than our ZTT Deals God, Dr. Zoomer. The Deals God has his own dedicated channel in our server for posting all the good PC hardware deals. You can turn notifications on for just his postings, by the way. And if you're in the market for building a new PC, this is exactly what I would recommend doing to save some good money. Also make sure that you do get at least a two by eight gigabyte kit like I did, because if you're going with a cheap build like this, chances are your cheap motherboard will only have two RAM slots as well. Speaking of which, this is the Asus Prime A320M-K, and this is simply the cheapest AM4 motherboard that we could find on Amazon. The reason why I say we is because all of these parts in today's build guide were actually chosen by my Twitch chat. I stream over on twitch.tv slash zaxtechturf every Tuesday and Thursday, by the way, and we're always putting together PC part picker lists and contests like the build that we have here today. Anyways, yeah, this is the cheapest option that we can find. It's rocking a micro ATX form factor, zero overclocking support as you would expect, but it does have the M.2 port, which we can use for a better SSD. Because this is the cheapest PC that I would recommend, I couldn't afford an M.2 drive, but this gives you yet another upgrade path to take in the future. The SSD that I did select though is simply this 2.5 inch Team Group GX2 with 512 gigabytes. This SSD does not have DRAM and it's nothing fancy here, but this will allow you to run Windows in your game super quickly and it's a solid budget choice. This is another one of those choices where I couldn't get the absolute cheapest part here. If you're buying a brand new gaming PC here in 2021, the absolute minimum storage solution that I would recommend is getting a 500 gigabyte SSD. Moving on, we get to the power supply. And now this choice was the most interesting in my opinion. This is the Gigabyte GP P450B, which is an 80 plus bronze certified 450 watt option from Gigabyte. And I've literally never used a Gigabyte power supply before this one. The reason why it's so interesting for me is because this has been consistently sitting brand new on Amazon for just $39.99. It has really great reviews. And these are being recommended by more and more people lately over the last month or two. And finally, the last part here for the 
the first iteration of this build is the case, and as you can probably tell with how baller it looks, this is definitely not just the cheapest PC case that we can find on Amazon. Instead, this is the Musitex Mesh Micro ATX case, and I did end up spending a little more extra for it for $66, but oh my goodness, this is one budget gaming PC case. I absolutely love how unique this design is. It does come with a white and black option, but I think this white option looks much better, and it even comes with not just three, not just four, but five included RGB fans. And all of them are plugged into a fan controller at the back, and then you can just press this one button up here to change all the RGBs at once, or you can plug that controller into the motherboard. You have a lot of options here. This is definitely an area where you could save a little bit of money though. I'll have some links to some slightly cheaper options that I recommend down in the description, but you guys know how I roll at this point. I couldn't pass up the opportunity to make this build look this nice when I was presented with this case option. With that being said, here's what the final parts list is looking like before we upgrade that graphics card. The prices listed are what I personally paid, and as you can see, we didn't even total up to $400, which is pretty impressive if you ask me. Keep in mind, you may need to exercise some patience like I did if you're thinking about copying this build, as we all know the market is pretty crazy right now and things are constantly going in and out of stock and also prices are all over the place. Now, like I mentioned in the intro, this is a really great option for somebody that wants to jump into PC gaming on a budget right now, but the magic in this build is that you can simply throw in a graphics card one day and this will be a very powerful system. There's a ton of options that you can go with here, but in order to avoid any serious CPU bottlenecking, the absolute max GPU that I would personally go with is something like the Nvidia GTX 1660 Super, possibly the 1660 Ti, but I don't think I would go with something like an RTX 2060 with the 3400G. I've been picking up multiple GTX 1660 Supers for new on Newegg over the last week or two for around $240 to $250, which means that would instantly turn this build to around a $600 to $650 build in the future. And then finally for the benchmarking section, which I'm about to show you, I'm going to benchmark every single game with and without the dedicated graphics card. I think it'll be cool to see how this PC performs right now today as a budget gaming PC, but then you'll also be able to see how it will perform in the future with a dedicated GPU. Jumping straight into it, we'll start with Call of Duty Cold War. Keep in mind that for the gameplay recording today, you're watching footage from the version with the GTX 1660 Super installed, although you will see the benchmarks for both with and without it. For this one without the dedicated GPU, I could just barely play it obviously at 1080p and low settings with 35 FPS, and then when adding the 1660 Super, that boosted us up to 1080p medium settings with a very comfortable 121 FPS. All right, Call of Duty time. Let's go get some kills. 1660 Super is looking pretty good. Over 100 FPS. Granted, this is with that dedicated GPU. Sit down. Uh, yeah. Running pretty nicely right now. Dude just tried to spawn kill me. Ha Come on, man. These dudes are just trying to spawn kill us. Headshot. Dude, did I just headshot Randy Moss? Oh, my God. Why do we always have a celebrity now? Sit down, too. Dude, I killed Randy Moss. I can't get over this. I, I don't even care. I just wanted to. There he is. There's Randy Moss. You got mossed. Does anybody actually get that reference in my audience? Please. Please tell me if you get the reference. You got mossed. And you got mossed, my friend. I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty excited about the back-to-back -back Call of Duty benchmarks with a celebrity in the game and i've been owning both well actually steve harvey kind of owned me but at least own that guy <laughs> all right we'll end things with the final randy moss kill i've been owning them and now i kind of feel bad next up was the new assassin's creed valhalla and because this is such a tough game to run as you can see this game probably isn't considered playable with just the 3400g but after adding the 1660 super in 1080p and medium settings i got a respectable 63 fps after that was rogue company and here without the gpu this was definitely a playable title in 1080p and low settings with that 118 fps average and then those numbers jumped up even higher obviously with better settings with the graphics card added rainbow six siege followed up after that definitely another playable title with just the 3400g and with 1080p and low settings they get 93 fps and then with the gpu in 1080p very high settings they got 193 fps after that i tested counter-strike global offensive because this is more of a cpu demanding game i actually kept the settings at 1080p and pro for both tests and with the 3400g it got 127 fps and with the 1660 super it got 223 fps just join the game and we instantly win. <laughs> no surprises there, but I guess I'll play another one. All right, I'm not messing around today in CSGO. I'm just starting off with the AWP. The AWP God is gonna be back in action and we're gonna start right here. 
Sit down, son. Oh, another one. Sit down, you two. Oh! Triple kill to start the game. Let's go. Hello, sir. Oh, come on, bot James. Bot John. Don't even try. As long as Steve Harvey isn't on this map, I'm good to go. Is this Steve right here? Nope. Somebody else. I got him, though. Just to see who the real viewers are. If you remember the Steve Harvey reference from a couple weeks ago, let me know in the comment section. Dude, did that dude really just try and spawn kill me? This water cooler is not nearly as cool as mine is in the studio. Mine is way better than that. Is this the chicken? What's the chick? You just taking in the view, I see. Okay. It is, I mean, that is a very nice view, but like... Sit down. Borderlands 3 was next. This is the exact opposite type of a game, how this one is really GPU demanding. And in 1080p, very low settings, it got 37 FPS. And then after adding the super, I got to boost the settings up too high and got right on the money at 60 FPS. Moving down this list of games, we get to Fortnite. And surprisingly, in 1080p pro settings without the GPU, I got a definitely playable 82 FPS. And then after adding it also in 1080p pro settings, that went up to 175 FPS. This is a really good test that proves that the 3400G is definitely an okay case solution for you temporarily while you wait to eventually upgrade to a beefier GPU. And for the last gaming benchmark, we have Valorant, definitely playable with and without the 1660 Super in this one. And without it, it got a very nice 174 FPS average in 1080p and low settings. All right, let's see if we can get one kill for warmups. Oh, that's a good warmup. All right, I'm ready to go. Hello. Don't turn your back on me, man. All right, so obviously with the 1660 Super, this game is running buttery smooth. Kind of just like my killing. See, it's all day, man. Peek one time. Sit down. <laughs> that was worth the wait. Sorry for the long clip. I want a no scope. There it is. Got it. Back on the board with the no scopes. Dude, I was literally just sitting there. I'm done, man. This, this game is way too easy. Look, I'm at the top of the leaderboard. They just can't do anything about this. Just all of them sit down. Just just go home. Go home. And then just like always, we'll wrap up the benchmarks with 3D Mark Time Spy. And without the GPU, we got a tiny measly score of 1,402. And then after adding it, we got a much better 5,469 score. So if you're in the market for a budget gaming PC like this, I would also recommend going down the used route, but please don't do that unless if you have more experience and knowledge than the average person just jumping into PC, feel free to click that video that's on the screen now and that'll help you out with another used build guide like this. But as always, I hope you enjoyed this video.